I think it's time for another update what's happening here in the Route 21 warehouse. In the last episode, I walked you through this warehouse, showed you all the big ticket items that I managed to get right, ceiling, mezzanine, flooring, walked you through all the offices and shared with you that the next step is moving in. And, and I think the colors and, and the toys in here bring it life and really make it pop. And that's exactly what happened. It is super exciting, also a little bit frustrating because now you've got to come up with how are you going to sort this? Where are you going to put the classics, the vintage, the new, the modern, the super bike, the cafe races, the namesake bikes? How are you going to get all this right? Also, some snags, you come in here and you realize, okay, how am I going to get the bikes up to the mezzanine? What I had in mind doesn't really work. And you come up with another idea and so on. So it's, it's ever evolving. The other idea, natural place to start would be to clear the storages because I saved some money there. There were six of them. I've cleared five so far. So progress going really well. The last one I can only really clear when I've finished my storeroom over here. But uh, it's nice to have a big warehouse floor because you bring everything in, lay it down, and then you can sort it because you can't really say, I'm gonna focus on the workshop and then go to reception. No, as it comes out of storage, you put it down in the warehouse floor and, and then you start sorting it out. So uh, nothing's really finished, but it's really starting to come alive. And in this episode, I wanna share a little bit with you also that crazy idea I had of uh, painting a wall mural, have it painted by somebody. Um, I want to share with you how that's going and that is exciting. So let's jump right in and, and let me show you how it's looking. So here we're at the end of the first real day of moving in. You can see it does look very, very different. Let's start over here. Here we have a special bonnet of a Mustang Bullet. I'll show that to you later when we hang it up. But here we've got some petrol pump from the 60s and all the different ages. We have the BP, we have the Total, we have the Caltex, and that goes with the Caltex pylon, which will go up there. It's a single-sided illuminated pylon from the 60s. In the corner we have the chariot pump, a Pegasus. Here we have a Satam BP, a chariot pump Texaco, and there I used the creative license. The I, I didn't paint it, I used a clear epoxy coat on it to actually show off the different materials where the cast iron brass, stainless steel, and really cool feature. And here we have another shell, Satam pump, some signage in the background. If you look in the back, there's another shell pump there we have a sassel which is a south african brand track an extinct no longer in existence also a south african petrol uh, company brand track was the logo was the quacha that zebra the extinct zebra and a couple of motorcycles the dt where the passion started from that's a 1986 yes it is a restoration project it is now in a state where I have space so I can tackle that. Here's the Voshkot, that's the Russian bike. I did an episode on that. Voshkot is the Russian version of NASA. They spent, uh, sent two uh, shuttles up into space, but in the 60s they started making motorcycles. So I did an episode on that. And here we have two ultra uber cool Moto Guzzi's racers. The Racer 1 with a chrome tank and the Racer 3. Only two of the threes came to South Africa, so really cool to have that in my collection. It would be really awesome to have the Moto Guzzi Racer, the second one. So first edition, second edition, third edition would be cool, but we'll see. And then here we have the first edition R18. Very cool in that. I will add to that the Maverick bike, which is the custom bike the P51 Mustang 
look on the R18. I'll bring that later. But this is what we've got in. And I think after day one, it's looking very different. It's starting to look a little bit what it's destined to be. Up on top, you have the first of my drum furniture that I made. This is where the lounge will be up there. I think super cool, really different to what it looked like this morning. And I think it's starting to look like what I envisioned it for, for it to be. And uh, I was a little bit worried if I could fill this place, but I am very optimistic now that it's going to look cool and not too sparse. So looking forward for the next day's move. Let me start where I feel most at home, my workshop. As you can see, not too much has changed on this side, but yes, in the drawers, in the cupboards, it's really getting full. All the, all the fasteners, all the soldering irons, and, 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 and all being put where I want them. So I don't search for anything. And I must say, even moving in and fitting stuff, doing changes, it is absolutely phenomenal having all my tools here, not searching for anything. The lathe milling machine is here now, so I can start playing with that again. But before I go out and show you the next room, I want to show you this. Now, what this is, is a crawler slash creeper for any paddock stand. This is done by X-Ramp and Martin kindly sponsored this one to me. And you can see where he normally puts his X-Ramp logo. He put my Route 21 garage logo in. And how that works is these two rails fit with these threaded rods, fully adjustable. So any width of bike from an MX bike to an adventure bike, super bike, uh, even those muscle bikes with a really wide back wheel. Single-sided swing arm, double-sided uh, um, swing arm, different paddock stands. It fits all the paddock stands, even a front paddock stand. That you put the paddock stand on this creeper as per normal, but then you can actually move your bike around because you've got your front wheel that turns and rolls, and here you can move side to side. So what I'll do in the next episode, I'll actually assemble this and show you how it works. So, Thank you to Martin from XRAMP, awesome invention. I cannot wait to put this together, but also the way attention to detail in my colors with my logo lasered in. So fantastic here. And here is the workshop, my little reception with the jackets and helmets hanging in. I put this display cabinet in. So all the interesting things will do carry week helmets from 2018 2024 that i got signed i put that in one of the episodes when i was there and even there's a model what these things are in here it's like teasers what you'll find in the warehouse even here this is my go-to bike how i started the youtube channel with my 2003 multi-strata 132,000 k's on that bike engine has never been opened and again that bike has now been brought in here and it is in the museum so everything in here it tells a story and what you see here is a teaser what you'll find in the back so jumping right in what we have here is the feature wall as i mentioned with the balcony above it and it's starting to take shape i put here my 1959 moto guzzi zigolo i thought a bit of a classic bike the idea is still maybe a flower pot either side with a silk flower, maybe a, um, the flag here. And I got the silk bougainvilleas and that is going to be like a creeper going up the side between the shutter up to the bottom of the balcony and over. So that is one of the projects. I must probably get my daughters involved with that to help me with that. Trailers here to bring the bikes from storage and then later from home as well. And here is the staircase. Now, a lot of the bikes are downstairs, but more about that just now. How do I get the bikes upstairs? I thought if I put a ramp on these stairs, I can either ride them up if it's rubberized and has enough traction. Alternatively, a mothball bike, I mounted a winch. Now that winch pulls 1.3 tons, which is a safety factor of easily one to five, one to six. And mounted to the wall runs of 12 volt has a brake and has an extension of 15 meters all the way down and i only need eight and a half so that is the next thing next development we did and what i want to show you here this is that main office lounge upstairs where you have a fantastic vantage point from the top where you can see toys 
I think you saw what I wanted to show you and here is one of those things. Now this is one of those paintings I found from a friend of mine that is an artist and she painted that not knowing my vision and dream regards my balcony where I want to have morning coffee and look down at my toys. So when I saw this painting I absolutely had to have it and love it. If you have a look at it that balcony it was also part of my inspiration to get a really ornate railing and it is a view onto Lake Coma of the balcony and that definitely is going on the wall over here because the synergy of looking out at Lake Como in Italy over here out there my sliding door my balcony looking down so this is where I want to let you in on how the mural is doing Have a look at this absolute masterpiece. I always say art is in the eye of the beholder. We all see something different. Some people like abstract art, but for me, realism. This is so realistic. The way Tabitha got the dimension, the perspective, you really get drawn into the picture. Attention to detail, creativity. I mean, she even threw a little bit of glitter in. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but as the light catches it, when I open the roller shutter at the back, there's different glitters in here from blue, silver, gold. It really pops, it comes alive, and the attention to detail, saying this with respect, not criticism, this is her first mural, and in my opinion, way too much detail, because this painting did not take days, weeks, hours, it took weeks, nearly a month. Have a look, every single window has curtains and railings. Look at the palm trees, even shutters, curtains again. The attention to detail, even down here, all the bricks were individually hand painted in. Even the weeds down here in the pillars. This is beyond phenomenal. And I don't know if she would spend this much time again or I wouldn't be able to afford it. So absolutely brilliant. Um, for a first mural ever to give you an idea of this height this is just a, over three and a half meters in height over three meters in width that is the size of this mural it is beyond fantastic it exceeds my expectation so well done to her and what a blessing to me and if you have a look at all the bricks and all of that hand painted individually there was creativity. I did allow her to have a little bit of artistic license. Yes, I am a difficult creature. I know that. I changed a few things, maybe more than once. And we did some changes from the original. I try to keep it um, because realism is important. But obviously all the street signs I wanted out. The people in the picture I wanted out. And from my last trip, I took some pictures of what the water actually looks like. Not the faded picture and I oh, moved the buildings over a little bit and she added the glitter um, her creative license she added a little bit of the greenery and the fountain in here but the attention brought to this is just beyond phenomenal I also asked her to sign it and I wanted her to sign it in a way that you have to search for the artist's signature with a date and I can let you in on that the signature is on this column of bricks in here if I go in carefully over here you can see and it is August 2024 so I mean the whole idea of this is you're in an Italian piazza in the middle of a piazza here and how do you go out you exit it here and go around the corner to Lake Como now obviously the fear is if you have a drink or two and you come back here and you're not paying attention you might just ride your bike straight into the wall so guys please be warned if you ever enter in here this is a wall 
So, okay, moving on swiftly. Uh, share some of the bikes that are standing around here is obviously my go-to bike, my 2003 Mule uh, Multistrada. Love this bike, designed by South African Pierre de Blanche. This bike here in front of me has 132,000 kilometers. It never stopped on me, never missed a beat, and the engine's never been opened. So if people say Ducatis are unreliable, this bike is the testimony. And I did a full episode of what I've been on and done with this bike. We've been down the road together, her and I, and uh, we've been around the racetrack, um, moved up from class D to C, and then to B, and then I got asked, please, to slow down, because I will throw it down the road, because uh, class A was for the races. So, not bad for 92 horsepower, but here we have got one of, which has become now one of my all-time favorite bikes, is my AC Cobra Triumph Rocket custom bike. I did an episode on that. That has really, very quickly, become one of my favorites. My R18 first edition, also super classic. I've got another one, which is a custom job, the Maverick bike, which isn't here yet, but I've done an episode on her. My two carbon Guzzi's back there, the carbon Odache and the carbon MGX Flying Fortress. MGX Moto Guzzi Experimental, also done an episode on her. I've still got the carbon V7, so that's the entire carbon set. I don't know how many people around the world have that, but that was an achievement of note, and again, your dreams have to scare you guys. Here, one more look around and walk around of where we are so far. This drum furniture I built during COVID period when we didn't have much to do. And the dream and vision was always there. Have a look at the size of this mural. This was also one of my crazy ideas. I didn't know if we could pull it off. But from my side, thank you to Tabitha. This is over and beyond and above what I hope for. It is absolutely brilliant. I will blend in her details. And if you want phenomenal artwork, that is the lady to go for. Pylon up here, and I'm really hoping when that is on at night time that the glitter in here will pick up this blue, silver, gold in here. The pumps will go. That is an old vintage illuminated sign as well. The Mustang is the first of the three cars to come in here. And yes, I don't know, there might never be all the toys in at the same time because I like to use those toys. Again, have a look at that oil painting of the Mustang around Swatkops. The speed she captured in that painting, stunning. I mean, from up here, it does look like a little bit of a Hot Wheels car, but I promise you it is real. And I'm hoping to get these silk uh, Bougainvilliers up on the wall shortly and have a look at the colors. It really does pop, looks good and we need to get bikes up here. So the winch was just completed yesterday. The last job on that one, I just have to get these ramps done. I wanna rubberize them. I hope you enjoyed this progress report and update of what's happening in the Route 21 warehouse. And guys, the message to you is that if your dreams don't scare you, you're not dreaming big enough. I mean, yes, we stumble, we fall down, we get up and dust ourselves off, but we have to keep going. And for myself, the journey has been 25, 30 years of buying bikes, selling bikes, restoring bikes. I got to a point where I had quite a few bikes and then I thought, why don't I build up a museum? And some little guy from South Africa wanting a museum, I mean, that's an ex crazy idea. People laughed at me. And that's why I say established 2015, because in the year 2015, I came up with the name Route 21 and go for it. Initially, you're too embarrassed to tell people what your dream and vision is. People laugh at you. But guys, I hope this can be an inspiration to you. Just dream big, chase your dreams, and never quit. Because, yes, it still scares me today uh, what I've taken on and have I bitten off too much. But you just got to keep going. Just keep chasing your dream. And from my side, thank you for joining me on this journey. It is super exciting sharing it with people. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, if you did, please remember hit that like button, give me a thumbs up. And most important of all, please hit that subscribe button to help me build the channel. And if you like the reminder bell, so you always know when I'm uploading the next episode.